Hey everyone, this is Etho, and I'm just going to make a quick little tutorial here on how to build this selector panel thing I made just the other day. Show you, show you how to build it and explain how it works. So this is the panel. Uh, slightly altered this one compared to this one, and I'll explain why in just a second. But as you can see, it's relatively simple. And here's a quick demonstration of it working. So basically you would use this if you ever have a situation where you want a player to make a decision about something, uh, or maybe even yourself make a decision about something like track selection or uh, maybe stage selection in a minigame or something like that. So uh, this is a cutaway version. Pretty cool. So I'll show you how to build it. Uh, for the tutorial, we're just going to build a 5-wide selector panel, but with this design you can have up to 15-wide continuous uh, selector panel like this. Uh, but what we do to begin with, uh, you got to run a line for your wire below the buttons. Then you run blocks for your buttons. And the lights above. And you can adjust this however you want. Like if you if you want it flush with the ground, like pretend this was the ground here, you can do it that way. Um, you don't have to have this this extra block above either. Like you can put a stair here. You're pretty flexible with this design. So anyway, back to this. So we do that, and then uh, behind the buttons, we're going to run repeaters directly behind them. Keep these all at one. And then right in front of those repeaters, like one off the ground, we'll have sticky pistons facing upwards. Oop. Run those all along. This is what stores the memory. Blocks above that. And then uh, you'll need blocks above the lights here. Blocks over here. You got to put some repeaters up there. Set these to three. So, and then uh, on this other side, run two more blocks, level like that. Nice platform up here, repeaters over here, and then wire behind those. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You just have to run a reset line here. And for that, you need a monostable circuit. So this is a really uh, easy way of doing it, just to have a piston like that and then on the other side a repeater to pull the signal through set that to two make that go to a block and then run a staircase upwards like this with wire and then on the very last one invert the signal and you have yourselves a very nice little selector panel very cool and i believe <laughs> I hope this works. I think you can just put a reset there too. Yeah, yeah. So something important to note about the selector panel though is where the output is. This may or may not be to your liking. It's uh, actually at these blocks right here is where you will hook your redstone up to or if you just want command blocks you can just pop, on up, pop them on the top here. Uh, but if you want to run the wire to the back what you could do is just put uh, redstone torches up here Make that go to a block, go down like this, and then if you want to invert the signal again, so there's only one that's on, do that, and then you can just run run wire going this way to the back of the thing, kind of like that. So with this selector panel, I actually have the reset line in a different place compared to that one and that one we just built. And I'll tell you why here. Uh, basically, if we had the monostable circuits over here, um, it would push up my. It would push this all up here, <laughs> which is not what we want, <laughs> obviously. Uh, so to keep this look, I I moved where I put it. So you just get this. Oops, get this back to like this, and this is where the piston is then. That uh, goes to the piston, two ticks up to this block. 
uh, then into this torch and up into our wiring there. So that's how I did that. And you'll need to do the same if you want to keep this look or if you want to do like a flush wall look like that, you know, then you'll have to do it this way. And maybe quickly, let's just look at a few other specifics with this design. Uh, first of all, it does work with wooden buttons. This is something you have to be really careful with with redstone devices now. Oops. Is if they work with stone or wooden but buttons or both. Because wooden buttons have a longer pulse than the stone ones, so not everything works with one or the other. But this does with both. Um, also, uh, if with this design, if we select say number three you see it says selection three was chosen if we try to select that again it's not going to send out another redstone pulse uh, so this command block doesn't get activated again which may or may not be something you're looking for but it doesn't it doesn't allow you, you to select something you've already selected again um, also if you were to change these from three to something shorter like one then it acts as a double pulser, which <laughs> I don't know what you would use that for, but if you needed two pulses for some reason, that's how you can do it. So, Section 5 got chosen twice there. Section 2 got chosen twice. And just a couple, couple little things there. And finally, with this tutorial, I'm going to explain some of the redstone concepts behind this device, as well as the little trick I used to make it so compact and and sneaky <laughs> if you're interested so uh, first of all how the memory works basically a piston can be powered if it if there's a redstone signal two blocks above it so uh, at the moment this piston is not being powered but if this redstone block was one block higher it actually would get powered by it and it will never retract so same thing here you can see this repeater will power the block if it's pushed up and then it doesn't retract even though even when the button gets depressed uh, but we can release it by unpowering the block like that and then repower it so that's what's going on here when this when this uh, line of redstone here gets unpowered by our reset line then all these pistons can retract and a new one can be selected so you can see that fell down um, now, if you were to just have a reset line, like a reset line alone, if we got rid of that piston, uh, it would never stick. It's a problem. You see that that redstone back there is unpowered when the button is unpressed. So that doesn't work. So that's what this monostable circuit thing, this little trick is about. What this allows me to do is shorten the length of the pulse of this wire from the button press and basically um, <laughs> uh, this this wire is still powered when when this button gets released and so it stays up so it just speeds up the reset line quick enough where all the pistons can drop down but since this is still being powered the button the one piston behind there st still is ex extended like that and that's how it works oh, perfect timing to end the tutorial so thank you for watching everyone I hope you enjoyed it found it interesting and maybe you'll even get to use it for something